Welcome back everybody. Today is another wonderful day to work on Pandas. Good. Last week we covered the most important features of Pandas. And today actually we will use Pandas to do data analysis, to extract uh, some insight from data set and also to clean data. So last week was the eighth week of the training and today we just continued. And, uh, and the data set I chose is actually wine review. As you can see, 130,000 wine reviews with variety, location, winery, price and the description. So these are the attributes, so the features that describe the wine. So usually you can work on here if you don't have anything uh, together installed. As you can see, you just create a notebook by clicking over here. A notebook will be created. I will show you. And then, as you can see, then you can give it a name and then the file is actually imported. Let me just run this. Hey, and then now. Uh, yeah, have you seen it? it's rare? So I have to give it some time and it will give me the different file names. Yep, have you seen the different file names? So uh, this one file and another JSON file and another 130,000. Uh, okay, let's go for the 130. The, before that, I want to put most of this just to make clear, you know that we need this, right? I import NumPy as NP if we need, import pandas as PD, and we like also visualizing our data, import mat plot lib dot by plot as the PLG. Yes, I'm importing these guys, this package, very important package for data analysis. Now I create a, a pandas data frame. So a DP or PD, so delete DF data frame. And then what I should do, PD from uh, pandas, uh, then dot read. As you can see, when I just press uh, the tab, it gives me different option of reading. So I go for CSV because I am reading the CSV. And then I just pa uh, pass one of these file. Of course, not JSON because I'm planning to uh, read CSV. Okay, great. Now, if you see here the data frame and if you say, hey, just to see some part of the, yeah, we saw the five recordings, but what is this unnamed? This is extra index, by the way. This, it has another index and extra index. To remove the extra index, there is this method uh, that will help you to remove. Uh, <clears throat> because I know I have used this, uh, I have uh, solved this before. So index column, if there is index column, uh, we can say index call. No, yeah, it's already there, index call zero. And then if you do that, we, we have a very good uh, a data frame, yeah? And then if you want to see more, hey, you can pass a parameter and the parameter is actually, uh, it could be uh, 10 or 20, you can add more. Let's see the first 25. Oh yeah, great. So how does it look like? 
as you can see, uh, it starts with a, a country column and then Italy, Portugal, United States, Spain, Italy, France, and Germany, uh, France again, United States, France, Italy, Germany, Argentina, and Spain, it goes like that. So let's also see the columns here, country description, uh, designation, points, price, province, region one, region two, tester name, tester Twitter handle, we don't really care for that, title, variety, and the winery. Yeah, so, but sometimes the columns might be really long, so we can access the number of columns in the, uh, like this. Or you can also extract the number of columns like this. Ah, columns, maybe I'm Dave column. What's wrong? Did I make a typo? Actually, yeah, columns can be accessed only as in, yeah, in only like this, yeah. Okay, let's move then. And sometimes you want to know the shape of the data and you can use this as an attribute shape. And as you can see, actually, we don't have 130,000 uh, rows or records, but it's a bit lower than that. So it is left with about uh, 29, uh, records to be 130,000, yep. And then we can also check the data information info. You can say, and you can get something country. As you can see, it has some null. Uh, this is the, tol the total. Zero to, yeah, total entry is uh, 129,971. So now, as you can see, if this winery, all the wineries are mentioned, no uh, null. There is one null, no null. But we can check the null actually. How do we check the null? <coughs> uh, uh, DF mm, is null. I think it's uh, is now, yeah, this can give us a kind of uh, false and true. False means it's not null. So we have to sum the value to count the F is null and then sum. As you can see, country got 63. Uh, null values, description, no null values, designation, most of the designation about 37,000 missing, no missing value, this amount missing value, 63 missing value. So we can also check the missing value like this. But our plan is not working on the cloud, on Kaggle. So let us do it from our local mission, but this is also good to know. After this, you will also see my work on Kaggle. I will like to populate Kaggle also as I did on uh, GitHub. It's really good platform as you have seen. Okay, now let's uh, start Anaconda. So what do you think? Kegel is good, right? It seems nice. Yeah, you just fetch. And the thing is sometimes, uh, as you can see here, want more power access, free GPU or turn on an internet connection. So uh, sometimes your computer might have, might not have uh, that much processing power. So you can use, their processing power to compute um, uh, uh, data that takes long or 
big processing power. Yeah. So sometimes you might be, of course, there is also a Google Cola. Uh, you can use also the Google Cola. So we can go all the way to uh, uh, this uh, one and we can create a folder just to organize our uh, information. I think I go here and rename. Um, I, I don't have to give it a week, but I can say week nine, yeah? Okay, then we have to have such some data sets over here. Uh, on here, so I think no, oh, I mean, where is it? Yeah, it should be free. I have some data set, the data set I downloaded already. Here, I am interested on one of the uh, data. I think it's okay to use this is, uh, this, okay, copy, and I will put it in the, where is it? Yeah, you copy and I put it here. Sometimes even you may create a, a folder also, an additional folder. And then you may call it data sets because you may have more uh, data sets and it will be everywhere, yeah? Great, now I can just go back to my Jupyter uh, notebook. Yes, here, let's go back. Now let's create and I call it uh, Y data analysis. Yeah, I will call it like that. Maybe it's also good to give it a wide data. And then like, let's import, import, important packages. What do we need, guys? You may need hmm, import numpy as np. That's the first. And then import. Okay. <clears throat> pandas pandas as n as pd and then import matplotlib py plot py plot as plt let's see no pandas pandas Okay, now it seems everything okay. The second stage is loading the data or reading the data, right? Loading the data. Okay, so what do we do? We say data frame and we read it and store it as in data frame. What's data frame? Data frame is actually the kind of data structure that has rows and columns in pd.read. And when you just do this, you can see, may I read it as CSV or Excel or Feather or whatsoever. So yeah, then a CSV. And then where did we put? A dot slash data set. Yeah, just tap, tap. If you just press tap, just print for you. And now let's do the data pre-processing and exploration. Such a difficult word, explore, exploration. Okay, wait. <laughs> and then you can just say DF, like if you just to call the DF, it gives you a data, something like this. And it tells you also the number of rows in the columns like this. Oh, there is 100. 29,971 rows and 14 columns because it's a data frame. And as you see, it has two index, this index and another named unnamed index. So we have removed this 
uh, by saying index hold zero uh, that helped us to remove it. And now we don't have that. Okay, good enough. Is everything clear so far? If something is not clear for you, let me know at this point. Is everything clear? Yes. Great. Now we have the data in our hand. Uh, displaying everything is not fancy, but let's just uh, get some of the values, you know, just uh, the head part. Head using the head method, we can say it just give us the first five rows. And maybe by using also like this 15 or 25, we can get uh, the first 15 uh, rows, as you can see, or records, yeah. How about if we are interested the last, the last few elements, the last few rows or records or observations or data points. So df.tell, and if you see the last five could be like this. And also if you want to see more, you can say data frame and tell, and you can give more uh, values, 25, 50, 60. Okay, let's go for 25. Uh, that's too plenty, so let's just uh, limit it to 15 maybe. And as you can see, 15 values from the other end. Okay, great. Sometimes you might be interested to know also the data frame columns and you may say, okay, we have country attribute, description, designation, pointers, price, province, region one and two, tester name, why tester, have you been? Have you been a wine tester? And this person, the tester, to uh, the tester, Twitter handle, title, variety, and winery. Yes, it has about uh, 14 uh, row, uh, columns, yeah? Do you see uh, df.shape uh, give us both the rows and the columns, but why? Oh, uh, yeah, now because we have removed that, uh, Let's see, uh, whenever you just uh, you have one, if we just try if, as you can see now, it's certain columns because we have removed the unnamed index. So practically we have 13 columns and 129,971, uh, uh, rows or observations or records or data points. Great. And these are actually attributes or features. Some of the terminologies I may use uh, it may help also when we start machine learning. Okay, great. Now uh, let's see the information using uh, getting information, getting information using the information, the info method. So uh, div and you go for this. And as you can see totally, we have this 129,971 uh, entries or recorders. So it's hard to see, for instance, this one has got one missing value, no missing value, no missing value and it's hard to know the missing value. So let's know the missing value. Uh, missing values or null values. How do we calculate them? DF is no, like this. As you can see, false, false, false. Okay, great. Uh, if it is true, for instance, this is null, right? Let me show you. It's null actually. It comes from the first value and it's from here now. So false means the null value. Then you can count this. Uh, if we count, how do we count sum this? But you may ask, how the sum give us, because it's false, false, but how the sum give us the missing value, the number of missing value. The first time I encountered this, it was a bit like, 
Okay, let me explain this for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, if I have numbers, nums, uh, one, two, zero, uh, zero, uh, false. I want to change this to numpy array. Num array. So tell me how do I change this to numpy array? And the p dot array and nums, right? Yeah, let's see the num array. Mm, num. Uh, have you noticed something, guys? It's yeah, false, changed false to zero. Yes, because false can be counted as zero. And now, uh, if I change this to again, if I change this to boolean, like uh, as like as type a bool. You seen? This and this are true value. And now, if I want to get the sum, I think it is. yeah. So it counts actually only the yeah. This is this is this is going to be considered as one, and this is one one and one two only the the truth values, because this is going to be zero, zero. And this is going to be zero, uh, zero, and this is going to be one. That's why you get uh, the, the count of the missing values. Is it clear? Crystal. Yes, the concept, this, the first time when you see some and it gives you all this missing, what? But the, actually the concept is somehow related to here. Okay, now you got it. But this, in this case, you can also use this NDA and it gives you the same value. So now if you know that if you, if you have, if you have a missing value, if you have a missing value, you may think of, you may think of what? Removing the records or imputing, yes. substituting, right? Yeah, but when you think of that, you should really consider last of things removing also uh, substituting with other data because uh, you may affect the nature of the data. You may, uh, you may have a wrong data, you know? Yeah, so we will talk about that. And later, now let's see duplicates. Duplicates is just not, it's not important. So we don't keep the duplicates. Uh, removing, 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 duplicates. Yes, so we say here, drop, and then you just have the duplicates. And if you call, yeah, let's see. Uh, this is what you have. Now, as you can see, I have 119,000. But if I just run again, as you can see, I didn't remove the value. So to remove, you have to use in place true. Now the original value is affected. And if I, this cell also, as you can see now, Yes, yeah, great. Yeah, uh, as you can see, when I'm running this value, I'm getting the, the removed. Duplicate has been removed. Great. Uh, Absene, what is the definition of a duplicate? Uh, a duplicate should be the same everything. Everything is the same. All, all of the columns. Yes, for instance, uh, if it's, as you can see now, country, like we have used uh, this, but uh, you, can, uh, you can change that concept.
for instance, if I if I'm interested just to, to, to remove the country's duplicate and this, it will also remove all. But now, if you just give it like this without any parameters, then all the columns should be checked. And that is actually real. Or for instance, you can use ID. ID, for instance, if it comes from database, and if you check the unique ID, if two values do have the same unique ID, then what do you think? Is it a duplicate or not? Yeah. It is a duplicate. So you don't have to check all the uh, things. You can just check unit. So a unique ID should be unique all the way, everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then now we have this. All right. Yeah. Sorry, may I come in? I have a question. I have a question. When I, uh, a strange thing, I found that uh, there's a difference from your result. When I use information with function, so there's my first, there's unnamed zero. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, uh, shape, uh, 14, 14 canoes. So what's the, what's, what's the reason? I don't know what it causes this reason. I mean, mine, not yours. Yeah. Uh, can you... All right. Uh, maybe I can share you. Uh, no, I, I no. think maybe what she's saying is that, you know, before you put in this, when you first mm -hmm. use the data frame, it gives you 14 column, which is unnamed one. So then after you had in this column zero, then it remove it. This is what she's asking about that. Her own is still have unnamed. How do you do yours? Uh, did you have this value in uh, when you are reading the file? Did you add this? Mm. Just a moment, maybe I, I have to show show the show my with this one? No. Do you see this code? Uh, if you see and check uh, if uh, you have- Oh, okay, I, I got it. Thank you. Okay, I missed this. Oh, so that's a reason. Okay, yes. thank you. This that's is my problem. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So guys, sometimes yeah, you. when you just change things, you can also come from all the way down. Okay, now we believe that we remove the duplicates. Okay, great. And of course, if we want to impute, we learned last time how to impute data and that's not a problem. And now let's see also again to revise uh, just getting some, mm, getting some rows uh, using lock, yeah. For instance, if I'm interested in the first, uh, yeah, let's just do the first uh, uh, row. If you are interested, you can just get the first row. But if you want to see it as in, uh, it will be something like that. Have you seen? This is actually the first row. And you can have also maybe if you want to have more rows, df.log, and then you can say 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, I have to put it in. Yeah, as you can see, I just managed to. But in addition, we can slice it in, instead of doing this. As you can see, I just did the slicing. So df.log, what you should do, uh, then you can slice up to the third, uh, maybe, okay. So as you can see, yeah, by the way, it's inclusive. It's inclusive. Yeah, you may wonder, can I do just this? Yeah, you get the same, by the way. 
-hmm. Slicing, just normal slicing. Uh, but in this case, can we do some kind of uh, like condition here, for instance, DF and then I look, uh, then just some condition. If I say just true, what do I get? Of course, it's wrong. Uh, I can't do something like that. Uh, but let me do some other operations. You can, let's try df again. Uh, but I think before that, I should have shown you how we can also extract uh, maybe here. Uh, let's see, uh, getting columns. In a columns. Column, uh, just a column. Yeah. To get a column, for instance, we can say df and then uh, what's, uh, by the way, you can say country like this. And then as you can see, we got all the country. Or you may uh, do it just to df. And then I got all the countries. Uh, but sometimes you may be interested in multiple uh, columns. And in that case, maybe country is the very important. And the title might be, and uh, then, uh, yeah, sometimes when you forget something like this, the available. So what you should do, df dot columns. As you can see now, I have country. Description is important, but for now, I'm not interested. Just points, the points. Uh, how about the price? Price is very important. A variety and a variety might be very important too. Now, actually, whenever you want to extract multiple columns, this uh, list should be inside another list. Okay, as you can see, uh, uh, country, as you can see, country, we have this title, uh, point is price and variety. So you can uh, by the way, you can save this. If you want to save this, uh, you, what you should do, let's try to add, maybe I can say, uh, to uh, CSV, and then uh, in the data frame, dot data set, and then I call it uh, mm, clean, clean the dot, Cleaned wine <laughs> CSV. Yeah. Then let's go and see if we have that data set. Have you seen? We have created that. So you can clean and transform it and save it if you want. Let's leave it there anyway. So now it's clear that you know how to uh, extract one or multiple columns. Yeah. Great. Uh, then we can use this the log to to get the uh, rows of different um, the rows of different uh, data points. Yeah, as you can see, and also for instance, again div dot log. Uh, for instance, if we are interested, uh, the zero, and we can say we may be interested to uh, you know the name actually country yeah just Italy as you can see the Italy we can so this is the way how you can uh, impute for instance if you want to impute this value you can change it to Finland then this Italy will not be any more Italy if I run this code yeah Yes, can we also actually, can we also get multiple values? Let's see, uh, by changing this instead of just uh, uh, a country, we can change a list of countries and for instance, points and 
As you can see, now I managed to uh, select uh, Italy and the points and I can go further if I want. I don't have to just uh, get everything and maybe the variety, what's the variety? Uh, the variety, yeah, white blend. So we can use this. Um, now let's see how we can use the eye look. I look. Uh, by the way, df.ilog, they do have the similar pattern. As you can see, I got this and you can do the same. Uh, and if you want to have more, you just do the same thing. One, two, three. Uh, yeah, but this one, as you can see, uh, I have to of course, I have three rows and three rows. How about if I want to just uh, I log slice up to three, then it gives me this way. This one is not inclusive. I log is not inclusive, but log is inclusive. What well, the one of the difference? Yeah, now, so does it take this thing like logical expression, something like that? Hmm. Yeah, we will come to that later when we solve some, uh, some of the problems. But now just let's uh, keep talking about uh, most of the features and um, I think now I want to also show you the description info. I mean, this uh, this data frame of describe. Uh, this all of a sudden just gives you this value. But do you remember include all? Now they actually it gives you a lots of data. But I would recommend you not to have this because. This, the describe means the descriptive data analysis and it works on the numeric data values. Pointers are in number and prices are also numbers. So total count, as you can see, we have this number off and uh, this is a total price and the mean, the mean, the mean point and the mean price and the standard deviation. As you can see, now you can, can we impute, you guys tell me, can we impute one of the data, one of the data of the points by looking at this uh, standard deviation? Yeah, standard deviation is not very big. Yeah, but still, um, because I'm not sure how this was calculated by, uh, for instance, for values that is, yeah, let's do another more analysis here before I do the describe, but let's just keep that and see the difference. Now let's drop the null, did drop uh, NA, that means we drop it and again describe. Because first where? Yes, it's different. Now, as you can see, we have first drop everything that is null and we calculate the, the uh, descriptive uh, uh, static, uh, statistical values like the mean standard deviation, uh, minimum, uh, maximum, and the percentiles. So now this, uh, the standard deviation gets lower than the, the previous. And also this one is 30, it was 42 somehow. Yeah, now we may use this as an imputation than this one. Did you get the point, guys? 
Uh, I have a question. Yes. If we see the maximum value after dropping or before dropping is different, it should not be different. Uh, the maximum. Maximum price. Yeah, yeah, it should, uh, it could because we did imputation. Yeah, we did a a drop of the net null value. If the null value is one part of the the columns, it could be removed. Yes, but uh, maximum just uh, picking the maximum value, and uh, if we have dropped, we haven't dropped the maximum like thirty three thousand uh, three thousand three hundred. It should be there. And uh, after dropping, if I see the maximum value is 2013. Yes. This is the point. Mm. Because maximum, simply pick the maximum value for price. Yeah, but- uh, If uh, we have dropped that uh, null value, uh, the point is uh, we have not dropped 3,300. It should be there, but after dropping, we can see the maximum. It's showing that uh, 2013. Yes. Uh, uh, because we did, in, uh, for instance, if you see the count, because when you drop, you never know which you are dropping, okay? You don't know. Yes, we don't know, but we are only dropping the null value. Yes, the null value. Right? Yeah, the null value could be, for instance, if the null value is in the region or the or the variety in any place, so it will be removed. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's not only the price and the points. It doesn't check because, as you can see, have you seen it? There's no. Uh, but yeah, now uh, but we can also fix that. That's maybe drop uh, now so with a parameter it would be uh, good to uh, avoid such a big nine now you got right you saw it yes but uh, 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 i think then dropping a uh, null without any like condition or uh, going to in detail, uh, it might uh, drop some valuable uh, uh, yes. details. Yes, so now we just only drop, uh, let me check. So Ops and F, what if you only uh, to um, do it for the price row? Yes. So D, D, F price, and then you drop N, A, and then you describe. Can you try that? Yes, that would be good. That's so easy way of doing uh, tax. Uh, in the points and price without going another method, uh, we can solve it with this. Yes, now we kept your highest value as you can see. Nice. Yeah, because I, I guess this drop NA drops all rows yes. uh, that have some a null value. That's true, because yeah. we didn't pass parameter. In this, the drop now, there's a lots of parameters uh, we can pass. So we can also just limit uh, uh, some of the the the. the the, the, the values we want to drop. But if you don't pass any parameter over here, that means you are telling uh, the Panda frame to remove any of the, the columns that has a missing value. Yeah, or any of the rows, yeah. Uh, but I think it's another way of being the same thing. It would be, how about if we do in the state of this, uh, you can go all the way and you can have a subset, uh, subset, subset. And you may say, uh, or you can just bring these subsets as in like this. This is what I was looking for. 
I want Michael to have. Uh, what is that? Yeah, yeah, this and this, this and this is the same. Of course, it's not the same, but we are using the drop now with some uh, arguments. Is it clear now, guys? Yes. Great. Now, this seems now you saw the standard deviation. Uh, so you can uh, do or intelligence, intelligent uh, guess to uh, do imputation or to decide to remove your rows. It's up to you. Uh, that is a statistical decision anyway. Yeah. Um, this is how we do, but if you want just to remove all those, you just drop in, remove everything. But I believe now if I do this, I didn't remove it because we didn't use the word in place. Okay. What is next? Uh, the next is actually, I gave you a, ta a task and the task was actually about uh, understanding the flavor of this uh, um, wine, the different uh, flavor. But before that, I want to show you how we can also uh, extract some of the rows, for in, of the rows uh, of uh, this data set. For instance, if I'm interested in more of the wines, uh, that are from Italy, right? I can say uh, country, and then I may say just Italy. Then actually this means uh, all the wines from Italy, as you can see, uh, 17,940 of these are from Italy. And if you want uh, uh, from uh, uh, Italy and uh, from Italy also one of the region because they have this different region. It might be Etna or uh, Lake, what? I don't know, but we can also add. Yeah, from Italy and the point, for instance, we can say, and we can use this operator and the point, points greater than a 95. If you do this, 90, 90, 95, uh, equal or greater than 95 feet. Uh, why? Add a D in the beginning. Yes, still this is not working because of uh, confused this because we have to do such kind of uh, parenthesis uh, then pandas will not be confused what to operate okay I think now it will work yep as you can see now we are in a high quality uh, Italian uh, Italian uh, wine. As you can see, the points are all 95 and above and all are from Italy. And even we can go further. Okay, so uh, maybe winery. Uh, maybe we want, I think there are not many wineries. Um, as you can see, Garcia, Confugata, Cabello. To bel cole. Yeah, it is not a very, yeah, this is good enough, guys. So uh, last time, um, one student asked me, how do we select? This is the way we select rows without uh, using any um, index. Yeah, this is very powerful, guys. We can use also or operator or like this. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Yeah, I know you define here, you define a country as Italy to, to have the number how many data from, in, in, yes. from Italy. But uh, I'm wondering uh, what kind of coding we can use 
to get the numbers separately by different countries. Now, okay. Group by, yes. group by. I, yes. I noticed there are some body mentioned, but I don't know how to write that code. Yes, uh, we can see, do this, div country. And then value counts. Have you seen now? From USA, 50,000. From France, this amount. And from Italy, we have this number. First, actually, we have just this. Yeah. And if you go this and uh, how many, in a, you can just check the length. Uh, it's about, yeah, uh, 119,988. And now, by the way, if you go unique, Yes, these are the total countries there. Unique means actually it's a kind of a set. I can just keep it there. In the next cell, I can check the links. Now, how many countries are providing? 44 countries. The wine is from 44 countries. This actually was a very good question to ask. From how many countries this data set from uh, was the media? So as you can see, Italy, Portugal, US, Spain, France, Germany, Argentina, Chile, Australia, and Austria, South Africa, New Zealand, Israel, Hungary. It goes on and on. And all these countries provide us wine from different winery. Okay, if you want to know the wineries, Deep, and then you may say uh, winery. And then if you go value counts, what did I do? Winery, not winner. Winery, not winner. As you can see, wines and winemakers. They do have, uh, they they appeared many times there, many. So, and Williams and Salem and because like this. And for instance, if you want to chop some of the data, you can slice it with something like this. If I'm interested in ten data, as you can see, or maybe the first twenty five. Something like this. Okay, group by. Someone was asking my uh, was group. Let's do. How do we do this? The group by, group by. So DF, and then uh, maybe uh, hmm, then dot group by, group by. A uh, country first, for instance, and actually it gives you something like this, and after that you should do some kind of operation, actually. Uh, mean, for instance. If you do mean, what it gives you, Argentina, the points, yeah, the Argentinian points, the mean value is 86 and the price. Yeah, but now this still can be affected by the, uh, what is this? Uh, we should do the dropping again here. First, we should do uh, the drop. Maybe we, we, we can just leave this here and we can go down another cell and do first drop, df drop, drop, drop now, and subsets. What are the subsets? The points and price. Then we group. What do we do now, guys? We're chaining makers, by the way, yeah? We can chain group by a uh, country and then the mean. 
uh, is there a difference? For instance, uh, this was 86 tuning 4, 86 tuning 4, no a difference, 87 14, 87 14, but it's, it's hard to uh, figure out where the difference is. Somewhere could be a difference because of the um, correcting the missing values, okay? Yeah, so you can do group by and uh, make something like this. So can we make this um, kind of visualization? For instance, we have these uh, countries, if we say df and then country, uh, this value counts already. Yeah, it gives you a kind of, we can actually do plot. The plot gives you something. No, nah, this is not, it doesn't make any sense, right? But what kind of plot? Let's do the kind of the plot is actually kind. It's going to be bar. And this is hard because lots of information, by the way, but we can actually make this uh, the people of bigger. Uh, but let's slice some of the first uh, 15 countries. Now it makes sense somehow. And pay a little bit of show. Yeah. And remember, guys, you can also save your data. So you can say plt dot save, and then you can call it uh, wine uh, per country dot By now, you should have the file over there. Yeah. Yeah, it was opened in another uh, screen, so it, it's already, it has. Uh, you can also add actually a title, uh, wine of different countries, yeah, something like that. And you can add also by saying X, the horizontal and Y, the vertical. Okay, so we made this. The next, yes. Absene, uh, the, the first line, is it using, ma, is this dot plot using a mat plot, plot lib? In, uh, in the under, under. It's the first line there. This one, when, this you, when you say blah, 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 blah plot uh, kind and something. Yes. Yeah. Is it uh, is that is, one using yes. matplotlib? Yes, matplotlib. But here I am using matplotlib inside uh, the uh, pandas because pandas used it in their library also. Okay. Thanks. Inside. So this is a sub like matplotlib is already a sub module inside panda. Ah. Uh -huh. The same. So if you affect also this, yeah, you can affect it also globally. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's handy, by the way. So uh, there might be minor differences, but it's the same thing. Okay. Mm, so that's why, as you can see now, I use the pandas there, the, the, the matplotlib in the panda, and then I add title actually from the package. I imported it separately. No, actually, no, the title was over here. Of course, we can add the title here. PLC mm, title. Mm. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, as you can see, it just works. What was the one of the question I asked you guys? It was about the flavor of these uh, different wines. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just made my own list of wines. 
uh, flavor. And I just came up with this fruity, earthy, spicy, smoky, flowery, acidic. So these are some of the uh, flavor that describe wine. So how do we extract? So let's see, for instance, uh, DF description. Yeah, as you can see, there might be, yeah, this is, can we look through this for description in this? We can print the description one after another. It's huge, by the way. Do I, 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 sh I shouldn't do that. It, it would be better, for instance, uh, five of them. Yeah. Yeah, just small amount. So now you, you have a takers. You can do, for instance, if you want, you can split them like this and to have a, a, you can see aroma includes tropical fruit, brown, uh, brimestone, dried herb, overly expressive of fruit, citrus, for instance, actually citrus and dried citrus is one of the acidic, uh, yeah, as it's already mentioned here, acidic, yeah, great. So this will be in the acidic category. And as you can see, this is, this is going to be in a, the fruity category. And again, let's check this flavor. What category? Fermented? Uh, tart. Yeah, tart and snappy. The flavor of the lime for flesh and rind. Dominate. Some green pineapple. Fox with crisp acidity. So it's going to be as if the underscoring the flavors. The wine was all stainless, still fermented. Okay. Anyways, our mission will detect these words from the text. Now, for instance, I may check like this. Mm. Yeah. I have to go a loop for um, taste in tastes. And then actually, again, I have to check from every of them. So what I, I print, print, uh, test. In this word list. So I can put it here. So if it's true, that means now, as you can see, uh, but why? Yes, I think I made a very yes, because I didn't make this to lowercase. I should make it to lowercase. To lower. Still didn't work. And I think this should be also to be lowered. And but why? You have a small slice only there. Slice? Yeah, it's uh, up to five specimen. Yeah, but still I was expecting some uh, something. Let's make it bigger. It's all the time falls for some reason. There was one true value there somewhere. Oh, there's one true value. But that's strange. I was expecting more, but anyway, this day you got the idea. So what? That there's already a better way to do this. Uh, so how we, for instance, fruity, let's say fruity and let's store the fruity, this uh, DF. And then what we can do is actually uh, DF and then description. And we change this to string 
and from the string we can check contains if it has fruity. Let's just fruity. Now we can check the data fruity. Yeah, this is ripe and fruity, as you can see, but why? Let's just as a data frame. As the data frame is much better. This ripe fruity, as you can see, there's fruity. Uh, but I don't see it, it's hidden somewhere. So uh, this all rows, how many rows? 8,340 8, 8, rows uh, do have fruity, yeah? And we change for earthy. And we can change this to earthy. And how many rows? 3,962, oh, yeah? But as you can see, it's, it's a kind of, let's do loop, a proper loop. I can say test count empty, empty list, and then let's do four. I think I shouldn't uh, have deleted that. You can say four test in tests. And then we print. Uh, Oh, we print this, copy here. But this word has to be this one. So I can change this, test dot lower, because we have to change to lower first. Yeah, and then even it's a good idea to lower this one too. I'm not, but I think lowercase doesn't work there. Uh, then links num links of this and just give it links and then test count dot paint now every now and then. We don't need this. Now if we check print test. And yeah, as you can see, the different. Then we have to create our own small panda series. So panda dot series. We can do the test count, and we the index is going to be tests. And now we can just attach plot and kind bar. What? Oh, oh, oh. This is not right because the situation should be something like this. Yeah, something like this. And then, build it again, show. Yeah. As you can see, we have this fruity, earthy, spicy, and smoky, flowery, acidic. And this wine data set, not only this one, the lots of the data set you may find on Kaggle. You can create your own research questions and you can answer. So I want you to keep working on and to come up with different uh, uh, questions and try to answer those questions. Next week, we may work on this a couple of uh, uh, minutes and also we will keep on text analysis, uh, text mining and uh, natural language processing. Somehow we don't go deep, but we touch, uh, we touched a bit. Okay, I think today I have to stop. In uh, can, I, can I ask a question? Yes. Quick one maybe. If you scroll a bit up, uh, um, this st stop, yeah. Uh, if you show the code that you wrote last time, a bit down, there. there. Uh, I have a question about this, uh, the use of this pandas. You, you have the line there that says len df, 
df. So this format seems a bit funny that you have to use this df twice. Refer um, oh, yes. You know. Okay. Yeah. So how does it actually work? Okay, let me show you how it works. Actually, what it does is, uh, we mentioned it, but do you remember Boolean indexing? Yeah. Yeah, Boolean indexing means uh, this part, first this part will be evaluated, okay? And it will be mm -hmm. evaluated and it will become true and false. Right. So the true will be selected. The true will be selected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So the, the, this is just the same as, okay, let me show you. This is exactly the same as this Boolean indexing. I will show you somewhere uh, this. It's the same as this. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then, um, do, is this an alternative alternative way to the lock location? This kind of a double DF thing. Uh, with the I lock also, you may uh, uh, solve uh, see somehow similar. But this expression is just a kind of a must because you have to compare it. You have to have some logical reasoning to to go out to take out the value. We don't touch any of the indexes or any of the columns. I'm interested in the, uh, for instance, let me just take you here again. Let's forget about. Now we are interested in the uh, points. Points. Uh, so the points are actually, uh, now I got all the points. And you may do the sort, maybe sort. Uh, values, you didn't do that. Sort values, yeah, sort values, by the way, you can, we can do uh, ascending, ascending. I think ascending is different. Fold. Yeah, which is the highest value now? I think it's ascending. Yeah, sending false. So uh, these are because it's by pointers, as you can see, these are the uh, point, the different points. But now, if I am interested, like to select only values and values uh, of the wines, wines that are. Uh, actually, now I'm not just selecting only the wine uh, just the uh, i'm now selecting all the wines greater than 95 actually greater than and equal to 95 as you can see now i just i'm trying to select the best wines and i found 2392 wines and maybe i might be interested also spanish wine or United, then end. I have to use the end operator. Have you seen now? So this actually allow us to use expression and it will be evaluated to true or false. And that's why we call it Boolean indexing. And everybody remember, you can't solve the complicated problems without Boolean indexing. Boolean indexing is there for you to solve somehow complicated problems because it takes lots of expressions. And now maybe it should be also from Spain. It's a country not from Spain. So, and the pandas will get confused if you don't add parentheses, at least in one of then now let's see, yeah, because I just made uh, some kind of uh, weird. I think it needs another one. Okay, DF up to DF here. What? 
the country. Oh, oh. Mm, what's the other thing? Yeah, this we don't need. This one, yes. But why? There is no. It seems we don't have. Let's just make it a bit lower. 85. Mm, I don't know. Let's make this to Italy. I thought in that group there is Italy. We can check it. Please. Okay, then I think my equation is not good. Maybe add another parenthesis uh, okay. around the country stuff. Yeah. Maybe that. Open. Yeah, great. Thanks. Yeah, as you can see, pandas get confused so easily. So we have to have the parenthesis and let's also start just uh, check it with. Uh -huh, even we have quite a lot, but this is. Uh, seems uh, impossible how 95 and yeah that's okay there, there are quite a lot of uh, spanish wines with good points so this is fully an indexing the evaluation will be true and false and this true and false just if it's true for instance if this is for a true value it will be selected yeah Great. Shall we close today's lesson here? Yeah, thanks, Absine, for the explanation. Okay, thank you too. And we'll stop the recording.